lift up the name of Jesus tonight. Can we just praise him and thank him for all that he's done? Lord, we love you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, on this Thanksgiving week, oh God. Our hearts are overflowing with thankfulness to you, Lord, for your goodness, for your mercy, Jesus, for your love. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Come on, church, let's worship right now. Oh, you are worthy, God. We praise that holy and wonderful name, Jesus. The only name by which we're saved. The only name by which we're healed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your name. Hallowed be your name, Jesus. We worship you today. We worship you. Hallelujah. How many feel good to be in the presence of the Lord? Praise God. You may be seated for a short while. just want to share some thoughts with you. Looking forward to hearing from our district superintendent, Brother Parkey. This past Sunday in hyphen class, we started a lesson series on the oneness of God. And uh, while we were, while my wife and I, we were studying and preparing for that class, I had a thought and I'd like to share that with you tonight. We call ourselves oneness believers, but what does this mean? For one thing, it means that like the divinely inspired writers of the Old Testament and the New Testament, and like the men and the women that they wrote about, we believe there is only one God. This belief is based on such scriptures in the Old Testament as Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The Jews call it the Shema. It's one of the most foundational scriptures for, for a Jewish believer. Also, New Testament scriptures such as 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4, where it says there is no other God but one. This also means that we oppose the idea of polytheism, the belief that there are multiple gods. We also oppose a Trinitarian view of the Godhead, that there's a, a threeness of persons or a trinity of persons. And we oppose that view of God on the basis of Scripture. And I could talk for a long time on that. Books have been written. Um, Dr. Bernard wrote a great one called uh, The Oneness of God. So if you're interested in that topic, go ahead and go to that. And otherwise, I did want to, um, I don't know if there's anybody here that might be interested, but we give Bible studies. If there's anybody here that didn't know that, now you know. Um, I, don't, I don't see Brother Kreider. There he is, Brother Kreider. You can see Brother Kreider for a Bible study. Praise God. But the thought that hit me when I was th thinking about the oneness and thinking about what that means and what it means to be a oneness believer is, you know, we think about the, bi the biblical times. There were other gods out there, right? There were, other, there were other gods that people worshipped, right? They had names. They had idols. They had images, and, I, and I, so I tried to bring this verse into our, or this understanding into our context. In, I would say, the, the, the typical North American life, we don't go around seeing images, you know, that, that uh, belong to a certain deity. We don't go around seeing other, other gods that people are worshiping everywhere we go, right? Whereas that's how believers in the New Testament church or even in the Old Testament would have lived their lives. They would have had these things around them in their culture surrounding them. And so it really made me stop and ask myself, what does it mean for me to be a oneness believer? They were oneness believers, and that meant they couldn't serve other gods. But what does that mean for me where I really don't see a lot of, quote, unquote, other gods around me? But God cannot just be the only one and true God. He has to be my only God one and true God. Right? right? Amen. And so whereas oneness believers in the past, the things that threatened that were other gods that they could um, sacrifice to, that they could uh, do different rituals and rites to, our, the thing that threatens us today in our culture are, are a little bit different. They're a little more subtle. But they still threaten our walk with God. And I want to be a oneness believer. I want my life to reflect that I am a oneness believer. If, my, if God is my one and only true God, my Lord, then what should my life look like Amen. as a servant and child of God? Amen. Amen. And as I was thinking about this, I thought about the word ritual and how, you know, there's a very religious understanding of the word ritual. What we're doing here tonight could be considered a ritual. We come to church on Wednesdays, usually Wednesdays, Tuesdays this week, Right? But we usually come to church on Wednesdays. We come to church on Sundays. That's a ritual. But as I was thinking about that, I felt God, and, and for me, this is, a personal, this is a personal thought that God gave me. And I felt God sort of prick my heart and say, do you have personal rituals? Yeah. Yeah. You see, every time you wake up, 
That first thing that you go to, that's just a habit. That's a ritual. And I heard God say to me, do your rituals reflect your love and your reverence and your devotion to me? You see, it's really easy once you start thinking like that to say, is God really my one and true God? Maybe I'm not going and serving some idol, but does my life reflect that I am truly a oneness believer? We go to a church called Restoration Church, and we're trying to go back to what the disciples had in the, in the New Testament. We're trying to go back to what they had. And what they had was a personal relationship, was a personal walk with God. There was nothing that competed in their minds for their devotion to God. So I want to encourage somebody and we can stand. And let's just close our eyes and focus on God right now. Some of us need to make a decision today. God, you are it. You are the end goal. There is nothing that I'm seeking. I have no other motivations, no other, nothing else that I'm seeking after God. You are what I want. You are what I have come here tonight for. You are why I wake up in the morning. You are the last thing I think about before I lay my head down to sleep. Come on, let's worship him right now. Lord, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. We magnify your holy name.
moments where I could see your hand and the moments where I couldn't. (laughs) Through the daylight and through the dark. (laughs) Through the prayer requests answered and the ones that weren't. All my life, you have been faithful. You have been faithful. Man, that stirs my spirit. God has been so faithful. You can be seated tonight. Man, he's been so faithful. Man, I love the Lord. Amen. Is God good? (laughs) And all the time. That's right. 2 Samuel 6 and 11, and the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom. The Gittite three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his house. Man, it's been in my spirit today that if I could just get to the house of the Lord, that if I could just get in his presence this evening, it didn't take everything away. Those things don't disappear. But man, there's something that happens in me a refreshing that happens in my spirit when I get into his presence. And I'm so thankful. After 35 years of having God's spirit, I'm still driven to be in the presence of the Lord. I'm so thankful. I am so thankful for the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. We want to give you another opportunity to worship the Lord in a different way. Ushers are coming. Man, I love the presence of the Lord. I love the presence of the Lord. Man, just to be in His presence. There's three ways to give this evening at Restoration Church. The first way you can give is you can give physically here on the platform uh, by envelope. The second way you can give is you can give by going to restorationupc.com, restorationupc.com. And the third way that you can give is you can give by going to our app and searching Restoration UPC and giving there on the app. But before we pray over our offering tonight, I do want to remind you, there's a we have a couple dates upcoming. And so if you have pen and paper, make sure you jot these down. These are really important. So our Christmas banquet is coming. Everyone say Christmas banquet. 
December the 6th at All Occasions Banquet Center. Make sure that you sign up for that. It's a great event every year. We love it. We love the Christmas banquet. It's a great event. Do not miss it. And secondly, we will remind you that the Christmas concert is December the 12th. Everyone say December the 12th at noon. And do not miss that event. These are two of the greatest events we do all year long. They happen in December. But do not miss those two events. The Lord's going to shine on us. And I'm looking forward to that. Amen. The Lord is so good. Can we pray tonight? Lord, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for all that you're doing among us. Will you bless this offering tonight, Lord? We give it back to you. Help us, Lord. Give us resources to win our city and to change our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He saved me, how He raised me, how He filled me with the Holy Ghost, how He healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up and turned me around, how He placed my feet on solid ground. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the
your hands, all you people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Go ahead and open your mouth right now and declare his goodness and his power and his glory and his favor. Hallelujah. If it had not been the Lord, it was on our side. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody feel blessed in the house of the Lord tonight? He just gets gooder and gooder. My dad used to say, he said, God's good to everybody, but he spoils me. We're spoiled tonight. We're blessed tonight. We're favored tonight. Nothing like the presence of God, nothing like the house of God being together with God's people. There's refreshing here tonight. There's deliverance here tonight. There are answers in this house tonight. Hallelujah. Whatever you need, you can find in this house tonight because Jesus is here tonight. Amen. I give high honor to Pastor and Sister Trimble and pray God's continued blessings upon them on their travels. God would bring them safely home and all the others who are traveling this week. Pray for traveling mercies and pray His blessings upon our time together as families. Turning tonight to the 100th Psalm. The 100th Psalm, what a beautiful presence of the Lord that's here tonight, and I thank the Lord for it. I am so very honored tonight to have special friends in this house tonight that have come uh, to be here, and uh, I, I don't believe our lives are accidents, but I believe that God puts us on uh, trajectories that allow us to intersect for His glory and for His honor, and tonight, uh, I'm glad Brent and Linda are here with me. Uh, dear friends from the city of Wentzville, and uh, we're just delighted you've come tonight. Thank you for being our guest tonight. And uh, about seven months ago, I, I ventured out to Clayton uh, just by looking something up on the Internet and uh, stumbled into a business run by my dear friend, Brother Andre, and he and his wife, Linda, are here tonight for the very first time, and we're delighted they're with us. Pray God's blessing. And all of our other guests, why don't we give them a hand clap of appreciation. And there's something that I know about these four people. They have a passion for God, love God, and I appreciate them uh, making the uh, effort to be here tonight. And I pray that God just uh, gives you a double blessing, double dose of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Praise God. The 100th Psalm says, make a... Joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, not madness. Look at your neighbor, see if they're smart. Say, it doesn't say madness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves, we are His people and the sheep of His pasture. I'm glad I belong to Him tonight. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless His name for the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Hallelujah. I feel a praise rising in this house tonight. Amen. I'm going to teach or treat or preach or something tonight from this title, Thanksgiving, the Pathway into His Presence. Thanksgiving, the pathway into His presence. Would you do me a favor right now? Would you just put your Bibles down, lift your hands to heaven, lift your voice to Jesus right now, let's just give Him some praise in this house. God, I thank You for Your goodness. I thank You for Your presence that's in this house. I thank You, God, for what You have done, what You are doing, and what You're going to do. Hallelujah, God, You've been good to me. 
I don't have a complaint tonight, Lord, to hurl at you. I've just got blessings, Lord, and thanksgiving in my heart. We've come to say thank you on this Thanksgiving week. We've come to clap our hands. We've come to shout. We've come to make a joyful noise. Hallelujah, because I know that my Redeemer liveth. Hallelujah. You may be seated in Jesus' name. My dad was a preacher. He was a poor preacher. He wasn't a poor preacher. He was a preacher who was poor. Let me rephrase that. And uh, But one night he got a call. Somebody needed some food. He went to the store, went through the pantry. He, he got together some groceries, did the very best he could. He took them to the house. He put everything on the counter, bags of groceries on the counter. The lady started going through it. And uh, I won't quote her ver- verbatim, but she she said something about him, and she said, uh, we'll just call it blast him. He didn't bring us any meat. A true case of being unthankful. The Bible tells us that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. Unthankfulness is a spirit of our day. Let me tell you what unthankfulness will do to you. Unthankfulness is a spirit that will put you on the pathway to idolatry. Romans chapter 1 verse 21 says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image of, made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. There are seven steps that will take you to idolatry. First of all, refuse to honor and glorify God. Number two, be unthankful. Number three, make God not in His image, make God in your image. Number four, allow your mind and heart to be darkened. Number five, start believing that you are wise. Number six, allow yourself to become a fool. And seven, start worshiping anything but God. Israel's descent into idolatry did not start with them worshiping an idol. It did not start with them bowing down to a statue. It started out with them being unthankful. Hallelujah. That's why they kept they kept reminding them, remember, don't forget what God has done. Don't forget about where your blessings came from. Don't forget about how you got to that land of milk and honey. Don't forget how you came out of Egypt. Don't forget how you crossed over the Red Sea. Don't forget it was because of the goodness and grace of God that got us to where we're at. Hallelujah. I think we know that here on this Tuesday night. That's why we lift our hands. That's why we dance. That's why we shout. That's why we sing. Because we know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the grace of God. I wouldn't be here if God hadn't seen me through. I would not have made it. But I'm here because of the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God. Hallelujah. We've got to remind ourselves to be thankful. Psalm 92 says it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. It's a good thing. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. Hallelujah. Paul said, be careful or anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanks." 
thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody got a thanks for the Lord tonight? The devil could have taken us out, he would have, but he preserved us because God has a plan for every person in this building. God's got a plan, God's got a purpose, and I've got a praise for him to let him know, Lord, I thank you because you brought me through. I thank you, God, because you're still working on me. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 says, Rejoice sometimes. Rejoice when you feel like it. What does it say? Hallelujah. You mean I got to rejoice on Monday? I got to rejoice when it's raining outside. I got to rejoice when I feel like it and when I don't. Rejoice. Pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. In everything. Say it. Not for everything. In everything. I'm going to find something to be thankful for. Hallelujah. I, somebody preached a sermon one time says, I'm in it, but I'm coming out of it. Lord, I'm thankful that you're taking me through this valley of the shadow of death. I thank you, Lord, you're bringing me out. I thank you for your salvation. In everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It's the will of God on a Tuesday night to give thanks to the Lord. It's the will of God to worship him tonight. It's the will of God to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Oh, somebody shout rejoice. Hallelujah. You know what needs to happen tonight? We need to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all your lands. Hallelujah. I don't care if you open your mouth and do it. I don't care if you put your hands together and do it. I don't care if you stomp your feet and do it. But let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all your lands. Oh, something happens when you begin to praise God. Something happens when you begin to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I want the enemy to know, amen, I may be knocked down, but I'm not, I'm not knocked out because greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise. Don't make a complaint or an excuse. Make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. God to live on that situation. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. You know what? You know when I want to go to Krispy Kreme? Hot lights on. I just want to get at the end of the conveyor belt. Just <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want any I don't want any discounted day old Krispy Kreme. I don't want to have to warm it up in the microwave. No, I want it when it's coming off fresh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't want him to have to live on some stale praise, some stale worship, some leftover praise. Hallelujah. But every day of the week, I want to get up in the morning saying this is the day that the Lord hath made, and I will. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what she's going to do. But I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, there's a pathway into the presence of God, and it starts with make up in your mind. I'm going to be a praiser. I'm going to be a worshiper. I'm going to have a song of thanksgiving in my heart. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Praise is not about us. It's not about our preferences. 
It's not about what I like or don't like. It's all about Him. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Oh, all you lands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to have a degree. You don't have to have a pedigree. You don't have to be able to quote the Bible forwards and backwards. You just have to have breath in your body. Because he said, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. If you're breathing tonight, amen, you have an invitation to be a worshiper. You have an invitation to come into the presence of God. You have an invitation, hallelujah, to lift your voice and lift your heart unto him and declare how good and how wonderful, how wonderful he is. Hallelujah. How many like to make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Hallelujah. I'm glad I come to a lively church. Four amens. I'm glad I come to a lively church. Hallelujah. Heard about that church. It was so dead. Somebody passed out and they called the paramedics and they took out four people before they finally got the right one. Hallelujah. Little kid looked up, pointed at a plaque in a dead church, and he said, what's that plaque for? And he said, oh, that's to honor those that died in the service. He said, was that the AM service or the PM service? (laughs) Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Praise is not about what I can get, but praise is about what I can give. Praise is not about what I want Him to do, but about what I I can do for Him. True praise is more than just a hand clap. True praise is a heart change that says, I want to serve Him. Anybody can make a joyful noise, but can you serve Him with gladness? Hallelujah. Too many people want God to be their Savior, but they don't want Him to be their Lord. I want to serve the Lord with... Look at your neighbor with a smile and say gladness. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. He doesn't want to have to twist your arm for it. He's not going to guilt you into it. But oh, when something rises up in your heart, it says, oh, hallelujah, I want to bless my Savior. I want to bless my Lord. I I want him to know how wonderful and how marvelous he is. I think I got a praise for him tonight. I think I got a wave offering for him tonight. I think I got a dance for him tonight because of how awesome and how wonderful Come before his presence with singing. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful for the songs that God has put in our heart. Ephesians 5.18 says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Might as well just drink deep tonight. Because there's free refills here. How many remember the day there weren't any free refills? Pizza Hut started having free refills, and we thought we thought Messiah had come. Because I can drink all I want to drink. Somebody treat somebody, Some people just treat God like it, He's just giving you a little thimble full and that's all you're going to get. But why don't you say, you know what, I'm just going to drink deep and I'm going to be filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And something just begins to come out. You may not be able to keep a rhythm. You may not be able to sing on key. But something will start coming out of your mouth. And you'll start singing a song that maybe you remembered or one you're making up. Hallelujah. Because you put a new song in your heart. Hallelujah. Come before his presence with singing, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm moving into the presence of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The foundation of my worship is what I know about God and what I know about myself. Hallelujah. It starts with knowledge. Know ye by experience that the Lord, He is God. My worship is built on the fact that I know that Yahweh is Elohim. I know that He is God. Amen. Hallelujah. Do I have anybody that would testify that you've, come, you've had an encounter with this Almighty God? He forgave your sins. He healed your body. He worked a miracle for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I know, I know, because I've met him. I know, hallelujah, because I've been with him. I know, because he met me in the pit of my despair, and he brought me out. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on a rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of his, of his hallelujah. His praise, hallelujah, hallelujah, knowledge, know ye, the Lord is God. Knowledge, everybody say knowledge. The second foundation is humility. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. But we've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Ooh, hallelujah. I clap my hands because you gave me these hands. Hallelujah. I use my breath because you put that breath into my body. It's all because of you. Hallelujah. I stand humbly before you and know that you're God, and I know that I'm not. I know that you're the creator, and I'm the creation, and I've got nothing but praise for you, God. It's knowledge. It's humility. Thirdly, it's ownership. We are his people, and we are the sheep of his pasture. Hallelujah. Our shepherd's here tonight. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You've come in with worry about want, but you're going to leave with worship to the shepherd who says, I'm going to take care of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are his people. And we are the sheep of his pasture. Hallelujah. Amen. The foundation of my worship is knowledge, it's humility. It's ownership. But I love this verse. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Because it is an invitation into the presence of the King of Kings 
and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving is that step on the pathway into His presence. Hallelujah. Man, there are ways that we can express our thanksgiving. I'll give you an acronym from the word rejoice tonight. I don't know if they have it for the screen or not, but let me give you this acronym for the word rejoice. R, refuse to grumble and complain. Rejoice. E, evict the spirit of entitlement. J, joy in the God of your salvation. Hallelujah. Praise God. Habakkuk the prophet said in Habakkuk chapter 3, he said, All of the fig tree shall not blossom. Neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olives shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. I will joy in the God of my salvation. For the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me walk upon mine high places to the chief singer on my string instruments. Hallelujah. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walmart may be sold out of turkeys, but I'm going to rejoice in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. They may not have that part, Maybe on back order. But I'm going to rejoice in the God of my salvation. I may have to suffer some inconvenience and, 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 my, and shortages in my life. Yet I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. I wish somebody would clap your hands unto the Lord. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. 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 R-E-J. Oh, openly share with others the goodness of God. Hallelujah. You know what I think happens when you start talking about God? I think he starts listening. You ever overhear somebody talking good about you? You wanted to get a little closer? Could you say it a little louder? start talking about him I think God shows up in that conversation (laughs) hallelujah I in everything give thanks C count your blessings name them one by one hallelujah E enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise hallelujah I was reading that verse a couple years ago, maybe longer now. This isn't real deep, but I got to thinking, you know what? Gates is plural and courts is plural. And it was like the Lord just said, you know what? Why don't you admonish my people to keep going through the gates and keep going through the courts? a gate into the city of Jerusalem. And what a celebration it must have been when they made it through the gate of Jerusalem. But they weren't to the temple yet. Hallelujah. I don't want to just celebrate the fact that I made it through one gate and into one court, but I want to keep praising my way until I'm right in the middle of His presence. And I'm at his feet. And I can look him in the eye. And he can look me in the eye. And I know that I'm there. 
Hallelujah. I'm thankful that you made it to the house of the Lord tonight. I celebrate you made it through the door. Hallelujah. But just keep on walking with God. Keep on praising your way into his presence. Hallelujah. There are those moments in prayer where you feel the presence of God and you know you're getting a touch from God and you think, oh, that's all there is. Why don't you praise a little longer? Why don't you pray a little longer? Why don't you thank him a little longer? Because there's going to be another door and you're going to walk through that door and you're going to find another court and you're going to walk through another door and there's going to be another court and you're going to find yourself in places that you never thought possible. (laughs) Hallelujah. But it all starts with thanksgiving. I've, I've been by the White House And I was glad to to do that. I've toured the White House, and and that was a great experience. But I'd like to be in the Oval Office. Hallelujah. Had an invitation last year to go to a prayer meeting at the Vice President's office, and I couldn't because of the camp meeting that we were having here in Missouri. I'd be honored to be in the, in the Oval Office. It wouldn't matter to me who was president. I'd be honored to be in the Oval Office of the White House of the United States of America. But you know what? I'll probably never be there. Hallelujah. But every one of us can walk into the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Oh, we don't talk about God that way. He, he's so distant. He, he's so far away. He's such at arm's length. He's your heavenly Father. And He loves you and cares for you. And in worship, you can cry, Abba, Father. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I'm coming with praise. I'm coming with worship. I'm coming with thanksgiving. Heart. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Would you pray that as a prayer right now? Hallelujah. Make that declaration. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless the Lord tonight. I bless the Lord tonight. Forget not, forget not all of his benefits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to forget about the goodness of the Lord. I don't want to forget about all the prayers he answered. I don't want to forget about where he's brought me from. I don't want to forget about the sins that he's cast into the sea of forgetfulness. I don't want to forget about the fact He's filled me with His Spirit. I don't want to forget about the fact that He's applied His name to my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I close with the what for or why of worship. He gives us three reasons. Number one, for the Lord is good. going to be happening here in the next few days. Woo! Did you try this pumpkin pie? Come on, try some of this cranberry relish. Sweet potato pie. 
Oh, this smoked turkey. Take a bite of this. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. Or in the words of Tony the Tiger, he's he's great. I got thanksgiving in my heart for the Lord is good. For his mercy is everlasting. Hallelujah. His mercy is everlasting. It hasn't run out tonight. It hasn't lost its efficacy tonight. It hasn't lost its power tonight. But His mercy is everlasting. And His truth, it endures to all generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So many reasons to praise Him tonight. So many reasons for our heart to be filled with thanksgiving. First Kings tells the story of how the Queen of Sheba came to check out Solomon's temple. When she had seen all Solomon's wisdom in the house that he had built, the meat of his table, the sitting of his servants, the attendance of his ministers, their apparel, his cupbearers, and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord. There was no more spirit in there. She said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in my own land of thy acts and thy wisdom. Howbeit, I believed not the words until I came and mine eyes had seen them. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and thy prosperity exceeded the fame which I heard. And notice this. Happy are thy men. Happy are these thy servants which stand continually before thee and that hear thy wisdom. Hallelujah. You know how the world's going to be impacted by the God that we serve? When they see the happiness of his servants. Serve the Lord with gladness. Sheba said there's something different about them. Sheba said they've got a spring in their step. they got a smile on their face. They've got an effervescence in their spirit. Hallelujah. They enjoy serving their king. Stand with me tonight. Hallelujah. This week of Thanksgiving, as we thank God for our families and thank God for His provision, let's never forget the source of it all, our Creator, our God, our Savior, our Lord, Jesus Christ, who made it all possible for every one of us. Hallelujah. How many have a need here tonight? Would you just signify by an upraised hand? You have a need. You have a prayer request. You have something that you need God to answer. You're not going to have to tell me or anybody else, but you're just saying, you know what, I, I've got a prayer request. I've got a need. I, something that, that my heart's burdened about. Let me just raise your hand. Amen. I feel like there are miracles in this house today. I feel like there are answers even on a Tuesday night prior to Thanksgiving. God could give us in just a few minutes of prayer. Hallelujah. But here's how I feel like the Lord wants us to do it tonight. In just a moment, I'm going to invite you to come forward. You can stand, you can kneel, you can sit. And here's how we're going to come. I'm going to come with thanksgiving. I want you to think about at least one thing that you can thank the Lord for tonight. Hallelujah. And we're going to come offer thanksgiving to the Lord. And in offering thanksgiving, we're going to move into the presence of God. Hallelujah. And I feel 
that when you get into the presence of God, you're not even going to have to tell him what you need. Hallelujah. But God can work a miracle on your behalf here tonight. How many believe that God can do that tonight? Hallelujah. As we begin to sing, would you just step out from where you are? Let's come together as a body t together tonight and bring our thanksgiving to the Lord. Hallelujah. And lift our praise to Him and walk because into the presence of God. Of Hallelujah. Are, I can't Hallelujah. Lord, I know who you are. Because I know who I am. You are, I can't you Hallelujah. God, you have all power. Because of who God, I thank you, you because you brought us through the storm. I thank you, God, because Lord, you brought us through the storm. I, you because of who I thank you, God, because you, you made a way where there seemed to be no way. Lord, I worship you. Hallelujah. Because of who you are. Hallelujah. I bring my praise to you, Lord. I bring my praise, God. You are, I, I haven't come with a complaint, God. Hallelujah. Because of who Hallelujah. you are, I Thank you for breath in my body tonight. Thank you for bringing me into your presence because tonight. Because of who you are, Hallelujah. I will lift Go ahead. my voice Go ahead. Praise your way into the presence of God. Praise your way into the presence of God right now. Hallelujah. I will enter your gates with thanksgiving. Lord, I worship you. I will enter your courts with praise right now. You are. Hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh. I provide. In the name of Jesus. In the name Jehovah of Jesus. There be a miracle right now. In the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle right now.
up that wonderful name. Jesus, I love you. Hallelujah. You're so wonderful, so marvelous, so mighty. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for every miracle that you performed in us tonight and around us. God, let our mouths be filled with thanksgiving as we bless you, as we thank you, as we spend this season, Lord, focusing Lord, upon all that you've done. Hallelujah. God bless, Lord, us as we go from this place tonight. Bless every family. Heal every hurt. Be the peace that passeth all understanding. And meet every need in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. We will gather again on Sunday. God bless you. Enjoy your Thanksgiving holiday in Jesus' name.